This is a small lake in Matawa River Provincial Park in Ontario. It's a nice relaxing place to do some hiking, canoeing, or even fishing. But what's really interesting about this lake is that it's not really a lake at all. It's actually a big beaver pond. As we all know, beavers can massively influence the ecosystems around them. So today, I'm going to go on a hike to show you what an active beaver pond can look like, some of the structures they build, and what happens when a beaver leaves an ecosystem. The first place I'm going to go, over there. So let's get on our way. The most obvious place to start a video about beavers and the beaver ecosystem cycle is the beaver dam, so that's where I'm headed right now. So beaver dams are built with a base of stone, piled with wood, and then sealed with a bunch of mud and plant material. They're usually about like five meters high, but they can go like extremely long lengths. The largest beaver dam in the world is in Alberta, Canada, and is about uh, 850 meters long. Something interesting about the beaver dam I'm approaching is that it's actually tiered. So it's a network of three different beaver dams holding this lake in place. The first one is right here holding the biggest puddle of water. And then we come over here to the second one, and it just holds this tiny little puddle in place. The third one is further down that way, and I'll be showing you that later. To build these dams, as you probably know, beavers use their big old teeth to cut down trees and trim branches. And then they bring it back here to basically use a structural material for dams and lodges. So you might be wondering, why do beavers actually build dams? And contrary to popular memes, they don't actually hate the flow of water. Beavers also don't build dams to hunt or anything like that. They're actually strictly herbivores, so they don't need this area of water to fish or anything. Since beavers mostly feed on tree bark, grasses, and leaves, they don't actually need these dams to help grow them food in any way. They get that from other places. The ponds they create sometimes help with food production because they do also eat aquatic plants, such as water lilies. So the bigger the pond, or not even the bigger the pond, but the ponds can help cultivate some aquatic plants for them to eat as well. But that's not the main reason why they build these things. The real reason why beavers build these dams is actually an anti-predator response. The dams allow for the water level to rise, meaning they can build their lodges in deeper water. This allows them to get further away from predators such as bears and wolves. So let's go check out one of these lodges. So this is a beaver lodge that's actually tucked right up against shore. This isn't usually how they would build these things. They're usually more like this one over there, if you can see it. It's kind of surrounded by water, away from predators and stuff. But this one's cool because you can walk right up to it. I've actually seen people fishing on top of it. I'm not going to go on top of it, but people do. So the entrance to these lodges is actually underwater, safe and away from any sort of predator. They're essentially a dome-shaped pocket of air surrounded by wood, mud, rocks, and other plant material. It's where they sleep, raise young, store food, and keep warm during the winter months. So I'm actually going to head back to the dam really quick because there's one more critical reason why beavers build these things. And it's because they're not really terrestrial animals. I mean, they are, but they're kind of clunky and weird and can't really move over terrain like this. In the water, their decently streamlined bodies allow them to move quite swiftly. So by building dams, they lessen the amount of time they actually have to spend out of water and at risk to predation. They can also do this by digging canals. Now, I don't think there's any canals around here, but they're basically dug out trenches that allow beavers to travel kind of outside their normal home range. Some reasons why beavers may dig trenches are easier access to food, safer travel, and easier transportation of logs to build dams and lodges with. The canals can actually be dammed at the end to help maintain the water level in the channels, and they actually conserve water during droughts. So beavers actually build these dams and therefore the ponds to protect themselves. All the added benefits just kind of happen. I can talk some more about those, but first I gotta go over there. So this right here, this big marshy looking area, 
is actually the third dam. You can't see it too well because it's covered in so much vegetation, but you might be able to see it from the other side. So I'm gonna go check that out. You can definitely see it a little bit better over here because you can see some sticks over there. But this whole thing is the third dam. It's pretty remarkable actually. And if you keep on walking down the trail from this third dam, you end up at this nice little like stream area. All right, so I made it to the lookout point. I had to take the long way around because like the trail map messed me up, but oh well. But this is just a good spot to kind of get like a nice view of the lake from above. I know you can't see the whole thing. Sometimes you can, but there's kind of a lot of trees around here, but it'll do. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to see a beaver from up here, but whatever. So looking at the pond, what ecological benefits do you think beavers and beaver dams provided to that? Perhaps the main ecological benefit is that beaver dams provide additional wetland habitats as well as nursing and feeding grounds for many different types of plants and animals. They also increase the amount of valuable edge habitat and transitional zones available in the area. For example, these ponds provide the perfect habitat for the beaver's best friend and occasional roommate, the muskrat. Bird populations are also very reliant on beaver ponds. For example, according to Ontario Parks, which is where I am right now, the black duck relies on beaver ponds for 86% of its nesting habitat. This is similar for fish. Both salmon and trout are known to use these ponds for spawning purposes. Now, this lake is actually stocked with rainbow trout, but in more remote and non-stocked ponds, some salmon and trout actually occur there naturally. There's so many different types of species that are linked to beaver activity and these ponds. For example, frogs and amphibians and even bats, which is why the beavers are known as a keystone species. Beavers really are associated with so much biodiversity. In fact, according to Parks Canada, beaver activity can lead to an increase in plant biodiversity of up to 33%. Ponds like these are also very important during droughts and wildfires. This is because the beaver pond essentially acts as a reservoir. It does this two ways. The first is because of the beaver dam. The beaver dam kind of holds back the water, producing the puddle, obviously, but there's always like a constant flow. So it's also spreading the water out. It also does this by acting like a sponge. And what I mean by that is that if the surrounding habitat is all dried out, the beaver pond will essentially lower the water level because the water will like spread out into these drier areas and keep them nice and wet during these times of need. These same mechanisms help prevent flooding. During wildfires, wetland environments like this don't really burn, so they provide a nice refuge for animals during these times. Now, this is a photo I found on Wikipedia, and it's a great representation of how important a beaver pond is in a wildfire. It shows a landscape in Idaho, USA, and just look at how the surrounding area is burnt while the environment around the beaver pond remains intact. Well, in terms of ecological benefits, beaver dams help reduce soil erosion and preserve sediment. This allows for toxins and other pollutants to be filtered out, allowing higher quality aquatic habitat and drinking water for animals, including humans. But in terms of the beaver ecosystem cycle, what's happening in there, in the water, is really the most important part. So before I'm talking about this, I just moved the areas a little bit, but you can still see the water. That is still the pond. So yeah. If you've ever taken like a, like a hydrology or general geology class, you probably know what's happening in there. And honestly, it's pretty interesting. So to explain, when a river flows, they carry three different types of sedimentary load. The first is bed load. And these are particles that are large and they just kind of scrape along the bottom like a rock. It would like kind of roll along the bottom or bounce as, as the river flows. The second one is suspended load. These are your finer particles like your sands, your silts and your clays and they're suspended in the water column. The third one is your dissolved load. You know, these are ions, they're carried in the water as a solution. The most important one of these sedimentary loads is the suspended load, at least in this context. Often more than 90% of river sediments is carried in the suspended load, and that's what beaver ponds really affect. So for rivers, you usually need a lot of energy to transport large particles like rocks and gravel in suspension. So they usually fall out quite quickly, but finer particles like silts, clays, and sands will stay in even if the water's flowing like slowly. So when beavers build their dams in a pond forms, 
what happens is the velocity of the water drastically decreases. This means that all those fine particles can then fall out of suspension and build up on the bottom of the pond. So as sediment builds up on the bottom of the pond, it ends up making the pond shallower and shallower until eventually a marshy wetland forms. And this wetland could make the beavers leave the environment. It's not too shallow for their predator defense system to work properly, so what's the point in staying? So now I'm gonna continue on my hike and show you what happens when a beaver leaves its pond. While I'm on my way to the next stop on my hike, I should mention that there is another reason why a beaver may leave its ecosystem. It might not just be because there's sediment buildup, but also because they've run out of trees to use. They run out of trees, they can't really upkeep any of their lodges or dams, and they also run out of food because, remember, they do eat a lot of leaves and tree bark. Since beavers don't travel tremendously far outside of their habitat, and canals can only take them so far away, sometimes they exhaust their wood supply and have no point in staying. But the end result usually ends up being the same. I'm just coming off my destination now, and as you can see, this is the old beaver dam right here. I can actually walk on top of this one, and there's one just down there as well. But as we continue over the old dam, you can see that there's still a little pond here. A good place for some turtles and stuff to live. So I'm just finishing up crossing the dam, and this is what happens when a beaver leaves its ecosystem. A meadow is formed. Back in the day, this whole thing would have been flooded with water and beavers would have basically occupied it all. Now there's not even a lodge left over. In regards to silt, its deposits help produce very fertile soil. For example, farming around the Nile River in Egypt is very reliant on silty soils. A meadow will form once a beaver leaves an ecosystem because eventually the dam will break as there's no more upkeep, meaning that the pond will then drain out leaving behind fertile soils and lots of decaying plant material. The silty soils and the decaying plant material really make it easy for these grasses to move in. They can grow lusciously in this environment and create a pocket of grass in the surrounding forest that ends up looking quite cool. These grasses help pave the way for flowering plants to colonize the area as well. It's crazy to think that this whole thing was actually just sort of built by beavers. Just another way they influence the biodiversity around us. These meadows are also a very unique microhabitat in forested areas, and they allow species that might be excluded from these surrounding habitats to thrive. This increase in grass species also aids in carbon sequestration, meaning it helps lower CO2 levels from the atmosphere. So you might be wondering if the lake we saw earlier will ever turn into something like this, and I don't think it fully will because that lake is pretty deep. I don't know the how deep it is like off the top of my head, but I know that if the beavers do leave and the lake drains, I think there's still gonna be a pond there, but some of the shallow areas could end up looking like this. So I'm back at my computer now, and I found a website that has a topographic map of the lake, and it reaches about 22 feet deep. The beaver dam definitely doesn't hold back 22 feet of water, so there would definitely still be a water body if they left, but the surrounding area could end up looking like a meadow at some point. The lake slash habitat is also quite large, so the odds of sediment piling up and or wood resources being depleted are quite low, especially for the time being. But who knows, human activity will likely only increase on that lake, so this could drive the beavers away, thus leading to meadow formation. You also might be wondering what happens to the meadow as time passes. Does it stay the same or does it also change? And the answer to that is, let me show you. Yep, eventually the forest will move back in. What's really cool though is that when the forest does move back in, they kind of rework the landscape leading to flowing water again. So eventually the beavers will come back and recolonize the area, restarting the beaver ecosystem cycle. As you can see, there are actually a few trees that are moving in towards the interior. So to summarize, the beaver ecosystem cycle starts with a stream in a forest. Beavers then dam the stream, accumulating water, producing a pond to build a lodge. The dam slows down the water velocity, allowing for sediment buildup and or beavers deplete their resource supply, meaning beavers leave the ecosystem. The dam then breaks, water leaves, and a wetland is formed. Then, after some time, grasses and wildflowers colonize the area and a meadow is formed. Then finally, trees recolonize the area and streams form again, thus restarting the cycle. Well, I hope you learned something today about how influential beavers actually are. They don't just affect the ecosystems while they're present, 
They're associated with so much biodiversity when they're both present and absent. We need these ponds and meadows to maintain species richness around the world, because while the final stage of forest is also important, biodiversity would decrease drastically without these different beaver-associated habitats. So let's not eradicate the beaver population like we did in the 15, 16, 17, and 1800s. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you could like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, thanks for watching.